Um, okay, uh, I spent uh, a while uh, over the past few days pulling together um, a set of materials, slides, and example models for today's class. And uh, we actually have a uh, fairly, fairly large set of, of concepts, um, particular illustrations of those concepts, um, and uh, understanding uh, about implementation mechanisms that I wanted to cover. But um, uh, based on uh, my experiences yesterday and, and based on uh, things that have transpired over the last uh, two days, uh, I really feel um, compelled to uh, add to this lecture uh, a substantial additional module. And uh, this module, I think, is even more important uh, by orders of magnitude than the um, themselves uh, quite uh, quite important and um, and uh, you know helpful for learning components that we'll be covering in class. Um, this topic is one that uh, when you first, uh, uh, when I first opened the issue, you may feel that it's um, a world apart from uh, other things we'll be covering today and uh, indeed from uh, material we're covering in this course. But um, as you'll see, um, I, I believe it's of a cloth with those items um, you know, and with the, the purpose of the, of the class. And it's of a of a cloth with your broader education as well. Um, uh, this is a topic uh, that uh, is, is an uncomfortable one. It's uncomfortable for all of us. Um, but I think it's one that partly because of that, but also um, because of the, the current uh, situation uh, requires all of us to, to address it with foremost urgency. Um, the topic here is one of, um, of uh, victimization and um, of uh, bigotry um, that is all too prevalent in our societies. Um, uh, the particular incidents that, um, that catalyzed my conviction that we needed to cover this in this lecture uh, were, were stimulated by the recent horrific shootings in the US, um, which are, you know, are, are beyond, um, uh, beyond troubling, beyond um, uh, horrific. Uh, they are, are absolutely um, unthinkably, um, unthinkably uh, shocking. Uh, but the issues here are not ones uh, of the U.S. The U.S. has has um, a set of issues which um, uh, provide a broader context to this that mean the phenomena tends to be somewhat worse in the U.S. than Canada. But um, but this is a, is a factor that is woven into the lives of, of many people um, on this call uh, day to day right now. And if it's not already, it will be um, at one point or another to everyone's life within um, who's, who's listening to this. I'm also aware that many of my viewers uh, for these videos uh, are from the US, um, but uh, this is a global phenomenon. Um, and what we're gonna be talking about is, is this, um, uh, you know, incredibly troubling pandemic, um, this parallel syndemic of, uh, on the one hand, uh, COVID-19 um, uh, and uh, all its uh, health and social consequences, but on the other, um, this pandemic associated with, um, with, with victimization, with um, bigotry, um, with um, uh, authorizing, uh, and with uh, with hatred, uh, these two are linked in a in a dynamic fashion. That's why I call them syndemics. They are they are joined at the hip, um, and and yet you know one of those uh, is newer, the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, and one of them is rooted in in millennia and and realistically probably hundreds of thousands of years of uh, of human history. And I think of the two, that's the one that's most grave. That's the one that in many ways is most pressing. Um, something that I'll say even as the technical lead for, for our province's uh, COVID-19 modeling effort. 
Um, I think this other fighting this other pandemic is even more important, is even a, a more grave threat. And even more for each of us calls for action. We all know on the COVID-19 front, uh, we've heard it many, many times, and we've heard analytic justifications for it in this class, why each of us has a role to play, whether it's you know wearing masks or whether it's engaging in social distancing or, or making sure we get immunized when that uh, is made possible. Um, uh, all of these things are extremely important for um, making sure that this terrible scourge of COVID-19 um, doesn't uh, strike down more vulnerable people, uh, doesn't overload our, our health system, um, and doesn't lead to needless um, grief and suffering of, of families and, and those from long COVID and, um, and other effects. But just as each of us have a role to play in COVID-19, we have uh, an equally important, and one might argue an even bigger role to play, each of us, when it comes to confronting this other syndemic uh, joined at the hip uh, with COVID-19. Um, and this syndemic, as I've said, you know, um, has, has its manifestations most recently in, in the violence that's been propagated uh, in the States. But we all know, all of us um, are, are aware that in each of our societies, and, and those listening in for 394, 858 will be aware that Canada is also subject um, to similar uh, incidents um, in terms of, of qualitative character, even if the level of violence because of saner restrictions on firearms and um, in a more cohesive society isn't, isn't uh, quite at the same level. Um, but, you know, violence is a manifestation of a much deeper issue. And it's, it's really that deeper issue that all of us are, are called upon as a generational challenge um, to confront. Um, and, uh, and, and this deeper challenge has to do with um, dehumanization. Uh, it has to do with, um, with uh, bigotry. It has to do with... Um, uh, with uh, you know intentional um, pursuit of of demeaning speech um, along diverse dimensions. What we've seen in the states is this manifested against a uh, a particular ethnic group, but also against um, against women uh, disproportionately, and. Um, and that's certainly, those are certainly notable uh, manifestations even here in Canada. But um, the issue goes well beyond that. It's, it's, um, it's one that, that gets into um, otherizing individuals um, to, um, to homogenize people who don't look like us, whether by, by sex or, or because of, of uh, religious signs of religion, or because of um, ethnic background or, or country of origin um, and treating them as the other. It has to do with um, microaggressions, um, uh, things that all of us have unfortunately likely witnessed at one point or another in our life. I, I've seen them troublingly common, um, both in the US and, and here, and indeed uh, many countries overseas. Um, the sort of smirking, um, uh, references to things that perhaps uh, serve a misbegotten um, sense of bonding among dominant groups uh, while uh, putting down others. Um, it has to do with, you know, uh, half jokes or, or, or humor used in a demeaning fashion, in a fashion that's, um, uh, that is otherizing, um, but, but is, is often deliberately uh, uh, provocative in a fashion that the person can't can't respond to, that puts them down and, and lessens, uh, seeks to lessen them. Um, all of these issues uh, are very common. And it, it's not a matter of, of just anti-Asian violence. It's, it's, it's not a matter of just anti-women violence, though both of those are so troublingly prevalent. It's a matter of, of um, dehumanizing others that cuts across diverse categories. Uh, religion is another common one. Um, place of birth, uh, another one, um, uh, 
people who are, are different by sexual orientation, um, people who who are who have different uh, personalities and are bullied. Um, uh, all of these are subject to, you know, to, to really troubling levels of um, of this victimization, this otherizing, these microaggressions, and um, all of this is something that affects each of us on on the call. Y you may be like myself, um, you know, a white male, um, and I'm, I recognize a position of of, um, of historic privilege there in the fact that traditionally there's been a, a dominance. Uh, of that group very troublingly over others. Um, but that doesn't make you any less subject to the adverse effects here. Um, just as, you know, antimicrobial resistance in a homeless shelter in downtown Saskatoon is a threat to all of us. Just like COVID-19 breeding in the tenements of Singapore can come home here in Saskatoon. Um, this sort of uh, bigotry, these sort of um, spreads of, of disrespect, um, they go around and they come around. And uh, each of us in some way in our life will be a minority, maybe through disability, uh, maybe through old age, um, maybe through um, uh, choice when it comes to uh, how to express spiritual feelings. Uh, all of these uh, will place uh, even the white men amongst us um, in the in the receiving end of bigotry. I've certainly seen it being a minority along several lines myself. Um, and you know, these are are not things that um, are just uh, complaints of of uh, groups that are are less powerful in society seeking to gain power. Um, these are not excuses for, for you know, um, unjustified uh, advancement. These are things that strike at the foundations of our society. And uh, these uh, components manifest in diverse ways. Um, uh, there are some that barely go without condemnation. I can tell you, uh, speaking to you as a fellow Canadian, that there's plenty of geographism within Canada, plenty of smirking references to the flyover provinces that in my view is, is uh, you know, at, at the same, on the same level as these other forms of bigotry, but often is not called out um, even in very public settings and needs to be. All of these things affect each of us. Um, and if it's not coming for you now, it will at some point in your life, unless we all take action against this. Um, you know, this is not a matter necessarily of people having in mind racial elements when undertaking actions. It's, it's often, you know, racialized situations that have put the victims in a position to be victimized, as is tragically the case, you know, in Georgia where the shootings occurred. Um, it's, uh, it's elements of um, cherished prejudices that we carry around about the lesser status of, of people. It's, it's that homogeneity of the other that treats people that don't look like us as interchangeable objects or interchangeable commodities uh, from the human perspective rather than dignifying them with, with, um, with human feelings and, and uh, genuineness of, of humanity. Um, and there's no question that this situation has worsened, uh, on, uh, you know, in, incredibly so in the states because of deliberate attempts to secure profit or political gain from this. And uh, whether it's the former president of the U.S. Uh, using pejorative words in the most uh, egregious and repeated fashion, whether it's his party or or others, um, other right wing parties, um, me media members, um, smirkingly using similar references or simply tolerating it and not speaking out against it, um, you know, there's uh, there's no question that it's been worsened, and some of that goes on in Canada. This attempt to use it for political gain and profit. Um, there's agendas, and you should be aware that uh, the agendas there are, in some cases, um, uh, not not immediately obvious, but they play a role behind the scenes in driving this 
and in promulgating it and promoting it and making it um, more, uh, more visible. And all of that needs to be condemned in the strongest terms. Um, but, you know, there's a broader pattern here that goes back hundreds of thousands of years. It's not about the U.S. It's not about Canada. It pre-existed all of that. It cuts into all societies, you know, of uh, power relationships uh, that demean people, intimidation and suppression of women, I'm going to call out very specifically. Uh, it goes on in the most execrable fashions with our, within our own province, within this very city from which I talk, and within our institution in various forms. And uh, it is something that all of us, again, suffer from, whether we're male or female, um, and whatever our orientation in life, we are uh, demeaned and, and made weaker as a society and as individuals because of the systematic, uh, the systematic silencing and, um, and slandering that often goes on against women. Uh, and the, the situation in Georgia, its racial component, its ethnic component has been spoken up, but I, you know, one needs to look at, at the component with, uh, with women and, and gender there in a big way. Um, now, there's a, there's a big way in which um, this component links in with the course. I had said that in my view, this is of a cloth with the materials for the class. And, and you could be excused for, even if you feel a certain resonance with components of what I'm saying, to be, to be puzzled by what this has anything to do with agent-based modeling or indeed dynamic modeling more generally. Um, I'd argue it has everything to do with that, in fact. Um, I had spoken about how the various forms here, that whether it's um, manifested against uh, by, by ethnic terms, by, uh, in terms of um, uh, sexual gender of birth, or whether it's, uh, it's a, a factor that's based on geographism, whether it's a factor based on education levels, whether it's a factor based on religion, all of these things um, have this, this common element of otherizing, dehumanizing, um, and uh, often uh, you know, suffer from, from humor, microaggression, and uh, attempts to, to lessen the worth of people uh, nearby. Um, bullying and harassment are of the same term, of, of the same type. Um, all of this, ladies and gentlemen, is a contagious process. All of this follows the, the broad outlines of what we've been covering in class in the system dynamics area and the agent-based area about spreads of contagion. Um, hatred behaves like a virus in many ways. Um, the spread of dehumanizing attitudes, the spread of, um, of, of lessening of uh, humor forms that lessen other people's worth, they spread via contagion. And this has to do with why each of us have a role to play. Um, uh, look, with, with uh, infectious diseases, with communicable diseases, uh, COVID-19 as an example, um, uh, I, I began this lecture by talking about the role all of us pl have to play in fighting, uh, fighting that spread of that pathogen, and that's familiar to you. Uh, but there's an equal role, and for similar analytic mathematical reasons, that all of us have to fight this sort of bigotry. We all have to fight this sort of otherizing, this sort of um, attempts to, to demean the worth of others. Um, and... And it reflects the fact that, that uh, like the spread of a pathogen uh, from, a, from an infective individual to a susceptible individual, um, a, a spread that can be interrupted or prevented through many mechanisms, whether it's vaccination or, or by increasing hygienic uh, protections like use of masks and gloves, whether it's issues of lessening contact with social distancing restrictions, whether it's in identifying infectives quickly and helping them recover. Um, there's similar issues, there's similar needs, and there's similar duties that each of us have in this front. Um, we, we all need to, to recognize that the only way that these attitudes, these actions 
these victimization episodes spread is because there's a there's an environment conducive for its spreading, which allow the effective reproductive number, not for a pathogen, but for these attitudes, allow it to grow. It's greater than one. Um, the the stock of you know uh, bigotry grows because the inflow is greater than the outflow. Um, it's breeding itself because there's situations that allow it to breed. And this is where each of us play a role. If we can make people more hesitant to circulate, to, to, to mix, to, to have contact by, by making it more likely that they make these smirking remarks to people who don't look like them, by making it less likely they'll use humor in a demeaning fashion, less likely to engage in microaggression, less likely uh, to, to say openly uh, bigoted things, uh, less likely to, to express um, you know, disrespect for someone of a different, uh, for, for a different culture, whether or not there's someone represented there or not. If we can make it a lot less likely, we're lowering the contact rate. We're lowering the the um, number of, of people that are likely to get infected by this. Um, you know, we can also enhance hygienic protections, make people less likely to take it up uh, through education. That's a big part, but but also just for recognizing this more quickly what it is, and um, and and recognizing the need to, to respond and, and cut short those episodes. Uh, we can also vaccinate people to prevent the spread, so to speak. We can, um, uh, from earliest ages, uh, build awareness of these issues uh, so that even a child who's never experienced the, the barbs of bigotry has never gone through and, and suffered from bullying. Um, can recognize uh, the, the unacceptability of this and recognize the fact that um, it is it is not something that is humorous. It is not something that is is worthy of respect, and is something that needs to be responded to. But the final thing here is is a point that I think often goes unnoted, and and this is uh, something that once again many commentators you know haven't haven't um, identified because when it comes to um, infectious uh, diseases. Uh, Again, COVID-19 is an example. Um, all of you will be familiar with the importance of public health measures such as uh, contact tracing, uh, such as uh, efforts uh, for isolation, so that if an individual is feeling symptoms, or even more so if they test positive uh, through, a, say, a PCR test or, or through a, a, an antigen test for point of care, um, they, they test positive uh, they they quickly need to um, uh, be put in a situation where they're not circulating, and and efforts need to be made for um, their recovery um, taking place in a in a faster or safer fashion. And there's many there's many conditions. COVID nineteen is is not unfortunately so much one of them right now. Um, it it's one where this plays a minimal role, but many other conditions where treatment. Um, is needed uh, for recovery. We call the treatment-mediated recovery. Um, examples that, that might be familiar um, to some here are, are, are bacterial infections like gonorrhea and chlamydia, which spread uh, sexually, for example. And where if people are not treated for this, it may go on for months and months and months. If you're treated, it can cut it short and, um, and make it less likely someone passes it on. HIV is uh, HIV AIDS has has similar phenomena now where if we give the appropriate um, uh, well constructed uh, cocktail of of uh, anti HIV drugs we can so lower viral load levels that it's not a serious risk of spreading so treatment you know faster identification and uh, treating individuals on the pathogen side is of a profound importance for for controlling many um, many lethal diseases such as uh, such as HIV/AIDS, much less um, others that that spread widely, like uh, sexually transmitted infections. But you know um, what this requires is is also us getting out of our comfort zones here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 
Now, all of this requires us taking action that can be uncomfortable, just as this is for me, um, in ways that, that sometimes require courage, sometimes require um, um, forethought, um, and, and require uh, tact and care. And it, and it means going beyond, you know, viewing people who express um, uh, express uh, elements that are demeaning to others or bigotry, um, avoiding just labeling them as evil and and you know uh, ostracizing them and shutting them out. Um, uh, you know that may have some salutary effects in terms of not spreading further, but we haven't really. Um, dealt with a key aspect of the situation, which is really the need to, to bring them around. Um, and there's many stories, which you may have seen, of, you know, former Ku Klux Klan members uh, from the states who have, who have come around, um, of brave individuals who've, who've, who've gone and spoken truth to power at Klan meetings uh, across racial lines in ways that, that help build uh, some measure of understanding. And this is the thing, and, and, and this gets actually into a, a, a very recent um, element of, of research on our modeling and on uh, infectious diseases um, that um, some of you may not know about. It turns out that there's a high degree of evidence now that while we've typically thought of different pathogens, um, you know, uh, uh, Nasiri gonorrhea, uh, gonorrhea um, uh, chlamydia trachomatis for two STI infections, uh, uh, enteric bacteria like E. coli and Klebsiella, um, uh, other other bugs like uh, the coronavirus uh, with SARS and and uh, for COVID nineteen, etc. These bugs um, actually often exchange genetic material for certain certain of them. They, they actually, what goes, starts in one can make it over to another. And one of the things that this leads to is, is very troubling, um, which is you can get spread of antimicrobial resistance, um, of, of ability to resist drugs for treating uh, a, a pathogen from one pathogen to another. Um, and uh, it means that while we've been treating each of these uh, solitudes, you know, focusing on one at a time and, and how to treat it, um, Often we get explosions of drug resistant um, drug resistant effects across multiple pathogens, which then can then spread in really nasty ways. And so it is with bigotry. This this issue, ladies and gentlemen, this issue of um, uh, of of uh, demeaning, of otherizing, this issue of of uh, you know putting putting down others with humor of um, uh, lessening other people's worth through comments. Um, this spreads from one form of bigotry to another. Um, and sometimes it's within a given person, there's you know cherished prejudices across multiple lines, ethnic, religious, et cetera. And, and that occurs troublingly much, but it also, and, and makes it all the more important to engage as individuals with people who suffer these attitudes to bring them around, to, to open their minds. But it goes beyond that. Um, and again, this is neglected in the literature. It's a dynamic perspective that often is, is ignored. Um, there are times when bigotry of one sort big, builds bigotry in the, uh, of a different sort as a, as a countermeasure. And some of what we see going on in the States um, uh, is, is the way in which uh, you know, senses of being wronged through uh, being viewed as lesser by elites end up building the sense of in-your-face racism back or in-your-face um, um, uh, bigotry back. Um, you know, when, when people uh, in favored positions make uh, smirky references against someone of lower educational status, say someone who, who does, hasn't finished high school or someone who doesn't have a university degree, when they uh, lessen that person's um, uh, worthiness as a human being because they live in the wrong area of the country or they live in the countryside and not in a city, um, that, that will sometimes breed 
um, uh, a certain uh, a, a certain you know resentment and hatred back that can lead to bigotry back. And it's up to all of us to call out all forms of bigotry. And that includes things like geographism, uh, educational bigotry that are all too common in Canada. Um, it's up to all of us as Canadians and up to all of us uh, viewing this from um, worldwide as world citizens to call out any form of bigotry because it breeds different sorts of bigotry and the same sort, just as Klebsiella antimicrobial resistance can spread over to E. coli. So we have to, um, when it comes to, uh, to calling up bigotry, be universalist in our, our efforts, um, not, not uh, abetting and, and tolerating certain types and not others, because it can breed bigotry of a different sort as well, of a sort that we may find very, uh, very troubling. It may build bigotry against us that we've never suffered before, for those of us in positions of privilege, like white males, like myself, um, so we we need to take action against all of this, and we and this requires helping those who have who suffer from bigotry in whatever form um, to move beyond those cherished prejudices, to move beyond sometimes the fears or insecurities that underlie them, to talk openly. I have never yet met. Uh, I, I certainly know many bigoted people. I know bigoted people that I love. Um, I've never met one who's resistant to opening up when you talk with them. And it requires courage. It requires presence of thought. It requires a degree of, um, of pre-planning, perhaps. Um, but it's a noble task. And it's one that ends up helping this whole ecosystem. This is not a you know, uh, a, a type of, of a phenomena that can be contained any more than we could, you know, sit back and view COVID-19 and, and the West End of town as something that will never affect the university community. Uh, we can't view uh, a wildfire spreading south of, of, of the city as something that will never threaten our homes. We need to regard these issues of contagion as what they are. They are calls to action for all of us to, to make the environment less sustainable for the spread of these attitudes, the spread of these actions, um, their, their first incipient development, and, and to be able to speed the recovery of their who, who suffer from them. Um, remember that all of these are in a social context that's highly dynamic. Fear and insecurity often breed anger. Where you see anger, um, you will often find fear lying behind it. Where you see bigotry, um, often there's slights that, that have contributed to it that that individual has felt the slings of. It may be a response to bullying in their earlier years and overcompensation for, for feeling lesser in terms of their socioeconomic position. But all of these things require some degree of understanding, calling out absolutely, not necessarily, and it often is not the best to do so in a shrill way, with a raised voice, with a, um, a you know, a loud and imperious tone. It's something that often calls for a uh, putting someone um, on notice in a clearer, uh, calmer, but unforgettable way that this is unacceptable. And it's called for each of us uh, to undertake that task. So just as in the spread of infection, we each have a role to play to bring this pandemic to a close. So with this other pandemic, this syndemic joined at a hip with the COVID-19 pandemic and cresting so terribly in jurisdictions like Georgia, we all have a big role to play. And never forget that even if it hasn't touched you yet in life, it will. And it's only a matter of time before it comes for you. So if you don't feel moved by this lecture to take action, please do reflect on that. This is something that is not a minority issue. This is an issue at the foundations of human civilization and society. And it's something that if we improve it, we will all benefit. And it's something if we don't take action, we will all lose. So bear that in mind. And I hope that this will lend some thinking about 
the helpful roles that you too could play when it comes to confronting this um, this terrible epidemic that we're currently with uh, we're currently witnessing, and that will help help you better respond the next time you do see um, see instances of these sort of attitudes that you will feel impelled to to take action. So I appreciate um, the divergence that's been involved in, in you know, me covering uh, this, this troubling issue. I, I know you were not expecting it, but um, it is something that I think has reached no question a point that all of us uh, need to speak, speak up about it. So with that having been said, I'm going to transition now to the formal lecture plan uh, for this, uh, this class. Recognizing we have less time, um, we will continue this plan within our, uh, our coming, uh, coming class as well on Tuesday. Now, um, as I said in my uh, opening um, elements of class, I did post uh, the uh, slides and the, uh, some example models. So if you haven't gotten them yet from Moodle, in the example models area, please do, do so now. Um, it is about 10 or 11 uh, megabytes in size, so it may, may require uh, you know, a minute or two to download for some of you with slower connections. I'm going to pause the recording and we'll start.